you know what nobody's asked me to do? Not one person. Nobody's asked me to build a desktop application uh, using uh, uh, Spring and... Um, and uh, so I'm going to do it. And the reason we're going to talk about it today is because, well, first of all, it's not a bad idea. Spring is really good at lifecycle. UIs have lifecycle. Uh, there's dependency injection. There's client-side facades talking to business logic and services in the back end. Why not? But also, I think desktop Java should, it probably won't, you know, but it should enjoy a bit of a renaissance with, with uh, GraalVM, right? I've talked about at length, indeed, uh, about uh, some of the um, awesome opportunities implied by having GraalVM native images in the mix, right? Uh, you can build command line applications uh, applications using Spring Shell that start up instantaneously. Uh, years ago, I did an, ap an application uh, using JavaFX and Spring, and um, it worked out really nicely. There's a little bit of a lifecycle mismatch there and a little bit of an impedance. Uh, I don't really want to get into all that today, so we're just going to stick with plain old swing. But know that technically, there is no reason you couldn't do JavaFX and GraalVM and Spring all in the same program, right? It's the plumbing's already there. Um, <clears throat> but in order to avoid having to rewire all that code, yeah, just go watch the old uh, JavaFX video on Spring Tips. I did that, I don't know, six years ago, seven years ago, a long time ago. There was a, uh, a framework we had, right? Years ago, this is called Spring Rich Client or Spring RCP. And this is like, you know, interface 21 days. It wasn't even Spring Source yet. It was a, an abstraction for working with uh, business logic in a UI with dependency injection and managing the lifecycle. And there was a lot of other competing things. I think there was at one point the Swing application framework. And uh, of course, Andres Almire, in, uh, for his part, he created Griffin, which is a groovy language, which compiles to Java bytecode, of course, a groovy language project that builds lifecycle management for you. And it provides components and all that for data binding and all that. So there's been a number of attempts at this. I think Griffin's probably the most realistic of them. Uh, but nonetheless, I just, I think it's a worthy kind of space for exploration. We're not going to get into all that today, but I'm just going to show you a very simple swing application. And then we're going to see that you can build that application and have it compiled into a native application, which is pretty neat. That means you can deploy and distribute, uh, you know, a windows.exe, a Mac native application, a Linux native application from the same code base. And you get the benefits of native speed. You got the full power of the Java and S spring platforms. Um, <clears throat> and Best of all, you don't have to distribute the JRE. You don't even have to figure out how to distribute the JRE. Just native image, here you go, download it. Uh, there's a lot of other opportunities here, but let's just talk about that. So we're not gonna use Spring RCP, although as a kind of a, on a lark, I kind of want to just try upgrading it. You know, I'm not even sure if this is the original project. This project I'm looking at might be a fork or a clone of the code uh, as it originally existed on um, SourceForge, because that's the last place I've seen it. But this looks to be like it. Yeah, the Spring Framework or SourceForge projects, Spring Framework. This is when Spring Framework was still there on SourceForge. It hasn't been there, you know. It moved to Subversion for years after it was here. And then it moved to Git, uh, not even Git on uh, GitHub, just Git back in 2010, I think, or at least parts of it. So this is a very old project, trust me. Uh, but uh, let me see, is Spring Rich in here somewhere? Let's see, Subversion, CVS. I don't know. I don't know where. I don't. I, open source. It's probably on SourceForge somewhere. I wonder if I can search for it. So Spring Rich Client. Yeah, there it is. Look at that. Um, Keith Donald. Yeah, this is the original project. It's, you know, when was the last release? I wonder. Spring Rich Client website. I wonder if that website works. It does. Look at that. And the last, uh, last 1.1 release was uh, in 2009. So, you know, there's actually a GA thing out there that you can use. Uh, don't ask me if it works in Java 21. I have no idea. We're not going to find that out. I just think it's kind of interesting. So let's just go back to start.spring.io. We're going to build a new application here. Uh, just, you know, beautiful. Swing, not spring, swing. Swing is the desktop UI framework in Java. And, um, you know, whatever. We're going to build GraalVM. Okay. Here we are. Java 21, because of course. And by the way, this is all the more useful now, you know, virtual threads uh, and desktop applications. Now I get lots of good scalability. I can have lots of service calls and all that kind of stuff, service orchestration and composition, all that kind of stuff happening in my code. And uh, my user front end code doesn't have to worry about it. Okay, open this up. We're gonna build a pretty boring little application here. I'll call it swing application. Uh, it's gonna be a record of type cat fact, which in turn will have records of type cat fact. Okay, and then this will be string text and long length cat. And then this is a collection of, uh, I guess it's a list, huh? So we'll say a list of cat fact. 
data. Okay, there's our two types, and uh, we're going to create a declarative client here. So we'll say git exchange, and then we'll pass in the um, HTTPS cat fact dot ninja facts. All right, cat fact facts. Good. So there's this, there's our client, there's our interface. Now we're going to use that. Let's actually just test it out to make sure that's working. We have to actually create an implementation of that. So we'll do that here very quickly. Uh, cat fact client. Uh, I'm going to inject the rest client, the, the new blocking, but you know, we have project loom now, so it doesn't matter, right? New blocking uh, rest client, which in turn we have to define. So rest client, rest client that builder. And we're going to say return uh, builder dot build. I'm going to pass in the JDK re uh, client request factory. Okay. And then we'll say uh, rest client uh, HTTP service proxy factory dot builder for rest client adapter, passing in that, uh, building it, and then creating a client like that. So cat fact client.class, and voila, very good. And now we want to actually use this in a thing just to prove that it's working, right? This is just command line stuff. We haven't actually built a swing UI, but we're just setting up the stage so that we have something with which to work. Uh, so client, we'll say client.facts.data.foreach. So there's the structure, right? Let's try it out. Okay, there's the data. The text is null. So what is the field that we should be getting back, actually? Oh, it's called fact. It's from the, the JSON coming over the wire. OK. There we go. So there's the cat facts and the length. Great. So now we have the data. We know that's working. Let's actually build a simple swing user interface, just like in university days or something. And, and JavaFX is even more powerful. But again, just let's just start with like brass tacks basic stuff, OK? So we're going to create a bean that initializes everything. We're going to launch a UI as a bean, right, in an application runner. So here we go, um, swing and swinging spring. Okay, let's see, new application runner. And um, we're going to render a, well, first of all, we need to get the data. So let's say var uh, data equals, we'll inject the uh, client, client, client.facts.data. Very good. Now we want to create a table. Okay, new J table and uh, new cat facts. And uh, you know now we need to actually create a table model. Okay, so this is the imp important bit. How do we tell? How do we communicate to the UI layer what cell and column corresponds to what you know attribute in which record in which in, in that collection? And we do that with a uh, with a table model. So we're going to create that class. Let's just say here for now, static class. And we want to create a abstract table model. Table model. So we'll say a cat fact table model extends abstract table model okay good voila so we can use that um it's pretty straightforward right you can see you gotta you got you gotta give it a pointer to the list of cat facts okay add that to the constructor voila and i'm gonna say this dot facts dot size is the row count column count well we're gonna have two columns one for the length one for the name so private final string headers equals uh, length fact dot split. Okay, and we'll say uh, column count is equal to that. Turn this dot facts dot size. Uh, no, not facts dot size. Uh, headers dot length. All right, and now we have to return the data here. Okay, so uh, we can we can do. We can take advantage of the new smart switch expression. So var cat fact. And by the way, did I store this as a collection? Yeah, as a list. Okay, so this dot facts dot git, and then that's the row index, right? And uh, and then the actual fact itself, row, right? Okay, and then fact is fact row dot fact, and then um, the length. Is fact row dot length. All right. Now we want to say switch 
column index okay. uh, case one or zero rather, then we return um, the length. Uh, case w one return the fact because we're going to have the length in the first column and then the fact in the second. And then the default case will just be null, all right? Very good, pretty straightforward, easy stuff to understand. That actually works, doesn't it? Yeah, that should be fine. So that'll be, those are our three cases. Uh, and I don't think we need to do anything else special. Let's actually just use this now and render the table, passing this in. So the facts come from the data. Okay, and now we have to actually draw the uh, UI, so of our table. And then the table, you know, for now, let's just keep it as simple as possible, okay? So we're going to, create a frame, J frame, and uh, the J frame is gonna have cat facts table. Okay, and uh, frame.add, frame.add new J scroll pane, and uh, the J scroll pane in turn will have our table. Okay, uh, and we wanna lay this out so that, that this will be in the center of the layout, border layout dot center, and uh, what else do we want? We want the uh, frame to be packed, so it's like as compressed as possible, there's no extra space. And then we'll say frame.set location relative to null, so it's centered basically. And then frame.set visible is equal to true. Now all of this in turn, we need to happen on a UI thread, right? So we'll say swing utilities dot invoke later, right? Okay, very good. So that's our basic program. Let's see if that, I mean, it should be ugly as sin, but let's see if it, what it looks like. Okay, not great. Did it uh, pop up anything? No, it didn't. Okay, so that's an issue. Invoke later frame set. Okay, so we've got the data, CapEx table model, headless. What did I do wrong? So is that not, oh, friends, it, by default, Spring Boot runs in a headless mode. So you have to tell it not to, because it makes sense, right? Most of the time you want, uh, you don't want the JR, JVM optimizing for the possibility you might use the graphics 2D context in Java Ott. You're not gonna run a swing UI on your backend server side microservice, right? So here, I'm gonna say run, passing in the args, passing in the sources, and the source of course is swing application dot class, okay? This actually turns into a property that gets communicated to the JVM underneath. Ah, look at that. It's ugly, but it works, okay? not. Not great, and you can make this editable and stuff. I didn't bother, but we have, look at the columns. That's the other thing is we don't have a, any notion of what the column names are. So get column names, get table, get column name. There you go. So we just return um, this dot headers column. Restart, ta-da, length and fact. Okay, so clearly it works. It's not great, but it works. So what could we do? How could we render this? I'm not gonna spend time showing you how to, to, to stylize this. That's that's neither here nor there, but let's try creating a native image out of it. And this is where I think things get really interesting. And obviously I've just done the absolute minimum here. This is not good code. It's just very convenient code. I'm gonna use Liberica, uh, the native image toolkit, which has great support for both JavaFX uh, and Swing. It's a distribution of GraalVM from Bellsoft, uh, and they have a lot of different distributions and we're gonna be using Java 21 support, of course. And what I did is I went to the Mac distribution here all right, I went to Mac and I chose ARM and I chose full, all right? That's how you would get that if you're just downloading it directly. Um, I It seems to work at least on my machine. I did, you can also do this, SDK list Java. And then uh, you could, I'm using the Liberica NIK stuff, this stuff right here. So I did this. Okay, now that I've got Liberica, let's go ahead and recompile. So I'll go here uh, and do that. Oh wait, you know what? Before I compile, let me check something. Remember, we're gonna be doing a headless application. We need to communicate that to the GraalVM compiler as well. So I'm gonna paste this configuration here into the Maven build. So it says configuration, build args, build args, configuration. All right, now we do the comp compilation. Okay, so it took about 51 seconds. Go here, restart the application. Hey, 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 look at that. So those are our Swing application. This is native code, you know, quite fast. By the way, 0.028 seconds, gotta love that. Just imagine the kind of data-driven kind of applications you could build uh, with this kind of thing. 
And, and if you don't want to build a user interface, that's fine, right? Uh, just use Spring Shell. Build an interactive dynamic REPL that people can use and it's and then compile it to native using the Spring Shell AOT hints and uh, you'll be in luck. Thanks for watching, my friends. Hope you got something out of this and uh, we'll see you next time.